<laughs> in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Can you hear me? Yes, sister. Yeah. Yeah. Father, Lord of all, let me a, let me be a bearer of good news by an example of a holy life and by utilizing some of my talents and time for the extension of your kingdom. Holy Spirit, give me zeal and enthusiasm for spreading the wealth of spirituality. Let the sacraments become my source of strength and grace to fill souls with hope. Let the name of Jesus come quickly to my lips as I reach out to touch the hopeless, the poor, and the sick. Let mercy spring forth from my heart at any offense so the world will know you are a forgiving God. Give, I give you my love that others will find the way. I give you my evening that others may see the reflection of your face. Help me, Lord Jesus, to change myself and to build your church. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So my sisters and brothers, a warm welcome to each one of you. Today, we are going to continue with this topic that we have all been so excited at the beginning of this class to, you know, uh, uh, you know, give a recap and also summarize what we have learned so far. So let's continue with what we have been studying so far and let's build on this relationship that we are talking about, which is eternal life. So yesterday, as you had seen, we started studying this, this uh, verse from John chapter 6, verse 63, where Jesus said that the Holy Spirit is the one who quickens. The other, the other meaning of the word quickens, or he hastens, he, he makes, he, 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 he speeds up, you know, what Jesus is saying, what word Jesus is saying in our hearts. So unless the Holy Spirit, you know, quickens the word, unless the Holy Spirit hastens the word, unless the Holy Spirit gives us the understanding of the word, the word will never be able to come and be, you know, planted on the soil of our hearts. As I mentioned to you yesterday, you know, the spirit can only deal with spirit. The spirit can only deal with people who are living. The Holy Spirit can only deal with people who are born again. For those who are not born again, the word does not make any sense. It, you, you get confused. It, it goes beyond you. You can't understand spiritual truths. That's what we saw in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Spiritual things, you know, become, you know, foolishness to those who are not born again because they have to be spiritually discerned. So when we don't have the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit is not inside of us, now it becomes difficult. But when the spirit of God is inside of us, we have been born again. Now what happens? The spirit of God makes his residence inside of us. When the word is preached or when the word is heard or when the word has been you know, explained to us, this word connects with our spirit. And now we receive the understanding. We receive the spiritual truths. And as a result, our mind will be, will be helped by the Holy Spirit to be renewed and be able to, you know, carry out that work and bring that word into progress or bring that word into manifestation. So we saw that, you know, unless we are born again and receive the free gift of the Holy Spirit, we will never be able to understand spiritual truths. So in order to understand spiritual truths, in order to understand the word of God, we must be born again. We must have the spirit of God because it is the spirit of God who gives us the understanding of spiritual truths. Remember my sister and brother, spirit can only deal with spirit. You know, the spirit cannot communicate with the flesh. The spirit cannot connect, communicate with our soul. The spirit can only communicate with spirit. And that's what we saw that, you know, when Jesus was talking to the to the to the to the um, to the Samaritan woman in the well at the well in John chapter 4 verses 23 and 24 we, he said you know true worshipers will worship God one day he said in spirit and in truth and God is looking for only such worshipers you can't worship any other way you know many of us because we have never been explained these truths we open our mouth and we speak some words as though you know 
for example, let me let me explain this. Otherwise, many of you may not understand this. You know, many a times, my brothers and sisters, just like we talk to one another, how are you? How's the weather? We sit and we talk to the Lord like that. Lord, how is you know? I'm feeling like this. I'm feeling bad. I'm feeling sick. I'm not feeling so. I'm feeling down. We think that you know God understands such a prayer. Now you know, my brothers and sisters, just to understand this, let me show you a very practical example. You know, if somebody has got a computer, you know, you can't tell the computer, you know, how are you? You don't do that. Computers or or or, or you know uh, the the PC understands what is called as a computer language. You need to have a software. You know, they 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 have different language like Fortran, C plus plus. There is a particular computer language where a program will be able to understand. You can't talk to, you can't make a program by just speaking normal language. You have to put computer language. In the same way, God only understands His word, and that's why the children of God should communicate with God in spirit and in truth. So don't you speak to God the way you speak to you know. Uh, one another, like you know, you feel I'm feeling down. You're going to tell the Lord I'm feeling down. No, you begin to talk God His land, His His word back. That's the way we are supposed to communicate with God. And because we don't have the word, the Spirit of God, you know, if it's not inside of us, we begin to make what is called as flesh prayers. Do you understand by what is meaning as flesh prayers? Flesh prayers are prayers that are not rooted in the Word of God. So many times we make lot of prayers. They sound big words. They sound very flowery words. They sound very spiritual words. But those prayers are not even being heard by God because those prayers are what is called as flesh prayers. So to communicate with God, you must communicate to God in spirit and in truth. So what is spirit? God's word is spirit. God, God we are, we are, we are in the spirit because we have been born anew, and in truth. Because it is according to His word, God's word is truth. So God wants us to speak His word back to Him, and when we speak His word back to Him, now He can command you know the angels to work for us. The angels will only work when the Spirit of God hears the word of God, and then they will act be activated to you know bring us bring forth to us whatever we are praying for, whatever results we are going to get is only when those angels begin to operate. So remember, my sister and brothers, whenever you make a prayer, whenever you make a prayer, you have to pray according to the word of God. There is no need to make long prayers. There is no need to make too many flowery prayers. There is no need to preach during your prayer. You simply make a simple prayer because a prayer is always directed to the Father. And it is always directed to the Father in the name of Jesus, because of what Jesus did, we make our prayer to the Father in the name of Jesus. Because it's only through the blood of Jesus, it's only through the through the sacrifice of Jesus that you and I can enter into the presence of the Father. So when we pray, the prayer must be directed to the Father in the name of Jesus. It should be according to His Word, and when it is according to His Word, that's the prayer. That the Father is interested in. That's the prayer the Father is really listening to. Those are the worshippers that God is interested in. He is not interested in religious prayers. He is not interested in flowery prayers. He is not interested, you know, in big terms and big technological words. He is interested in His word being spoken back by His children. And when His children speak His word back to Him, that's the time. God is going to, you know, respond to that prayer. He's going to send those angels. Angels are ministering spirits. We saw that in Hebrews chapter one, verse fourteen. They are being sent to minister to those who are to inherit salvation. So that's what we learned yesterday. So let's go back today to John chapter six, verse sixty-three, and let's see what this word really says. You know, we was we started yesterday with John chapter six, verse sixty-three, but let us go further and study more on this scripture. Praise God! Can we read that scripture, please? It is the spirit that quickens. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Look at what Jesus is saying. He's saying that the flesh profits nothing. 
the flesh profits nothing that means when i open my mouth and make flesh prayers which are not according to the word it is going to profit me nothing then he says the words that i speak unto you they are spirit and they are life i hope my sister and brothers we are really taking notes we are listening attentively we are going to change the way we pray let's not make the same mistake as though we have never heard this teaching so that we make the necessary corrections when we pray so that we can start developing intimacy with god remember to have intimacy with god we need to know his word when we know his word and we speak his word back to him now we are speaking in god's language we are not speaking in flesh language we are not communicating our emotions and feelings but we are speaking the truth back to god and you know my brothers and sisters as i said to you once we are born again we must focus on the spirit man and very little time on the physical man let me repeat this again once we are born again once we have accepted christ once our spirit has become brand new our spirit has become the same as spirit of jesus christ how do we know 1 john chapter 4 verse 17 says as he is so are we in this world can we put that scripture 1 john chapter 4 verse 17 says because this scripture should give you the understanding that the spirit of jesus and your spirit and my spirit becomes one spirit it becomes the same as the spirit of jesus christ not later not when we die but right now when we are living on this planet earth let's read that here is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is so are we in this world because as he is so are we in this world so you know my brothers and sisters john 4 17 one john chapter 4 verse 17 is saying our love is made perfect our love is made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment remember judgment is going to come for everybody maybe some of us think you know we are going to live here on this world for all eternity some of us don't even you know we don't even think of death as something that you know we are going to go and be in a much better place because we are not even sure whether we are going to go to that place that is the doubt in our mind so as long as that death hasn't happened we are fighting we are fighting to stay alive but we don't even know that after we eventually die where we are going to be but when you know that your spirit is already new your spirit has become the same as the spirit of jesus through the new birth now my brothers and sisters our love is made perfect our love is made perfect and now we can have boldness on the day of of judgment because our spirit has become the same as the spirit of jesus christ can you imagine my sister and brothers your spirit my spirit the spirit of jesus becomes one spirit the day we were born again the day we accepted christ and therefore we have boldness on the day of judgment we are not be afraid of death because we know and we know that when christ returns we are going to receive him he is going to accept us in his kingdom we are going to live in a glorified body with him for all eternity and that's why that love has been made perfect in us and we can face the day of judgment so brothers and sisters it is the holy spirit who makes all spiritual truths easy and clear to us you know without the holy spirit you will never be able to understand spiritual sometimes you know uh, okay let me talk about myself before i say about anybody you know before i really was born again even though 45 years i served in the church i had no idea whether you know this word of god made any sense to me it, sometimes i read the word of god i must have read the bible about two three times i was a proclaimer of the word of god in the church i was a lector i i i i i did the first reading i did the responsorial psalm i did the second reading i did so much of preparation but you know my sister and brother the word would never speak back to me i never understood the word the word would never make any sense to me and it was only when i truly believed in the gospel i truly understood the cross of calvary the 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 reality of the cross of calvary became so clear to me 
that I accepted Jesus as my Lord, God and Savior. I understood the reality of the cross. My spirit became brand new. And the moment my spirit became brand new, I knew and I knew that I was born again because there was a tremendous change in me. Uh, you know, I began to see that my hunger for the word of God just began to grow and grow and grow. So the moment a person is born again, the person's focus completely changes. And it is the Holy Spirit that we receive who makes the spiritual truths simple for us. He makes it clear for us. He makes it easy for us to understand. So remember, unless we have the word of God, unless we have the spirit of God, who's going to teach us the word and make it simple and easy for us, spiritual truths will become absolutely difficult. We'll require somebody to put it into our head. We'll have to be repeated the whole day. We'll have to be sitting with some teacher who will have to take spoon feeders all the time. You know, my sister and brothers, let me say this to you. I hope you will not be offended, but I must say this to you. You know, in the new covenant, listen to this. I, I'm saying this, but I'm, I'm going to say this out of love. You know, in the new covenant, you don't even need a preacher. I'm making such a bold statement here. In the new covenant, you don't need a preacher. You don't need a teacher. You simply need the best teacher that you can ever have. And his name is Holy Spirit. His name is Holy Spirit. You know, if we all understood this truth, if all the preachers could just, you know, explain this truth to their congregation and tell them, don't you look at me. Don't you try to learn from me. Don't you try to learn from what the Holy Spirit is teaching me. You go back to the word of God and be, once you're born again, ask the Holy Spirit to teach you. He will give you such revelation. And you know, my sister and brothers, the more you begin to spend time with the word. When will you spend time with the word? When you are born again. So again, you just can't sit with the word of God just because you want to make some study. You want to make some notes. You're just, you know, just because, you know, a preacher told you to go and study the word because you want to share it to someone. No, the first thing that needs to happen is you must be born again. So you will not go to study the word because you, you have to study the word. Not because you're feeling guilty that, you know, you're not doing anything about it. But the moment you're born again, you want and you want the word of God. You have a desire for the word of God. You are hungry for the word of God. You want to know more about the word of God. You want to know more the secrets of the kingdom. And those secrets can only be given by the Holy Spirit, not by the preacher. So the preacher's job is simply to introduce Christ point Christ to you, show you how the, you know, how that, give, him, give you the initial charge, give you the initial understanding of what really the process is and hand you over to the Holy Spirit so that you now through the new birth can go and study the word and build your relationship. You know, sister and brothers, you know, listen to this very carefully. In the Old Testament, God appointed prophets, God appointed teachers, God appointed priests, God appointed all these people because Everybody could not be given. God had to choose people. He had to assign them. He had to anoint them. He had to pick them up. And then he had to send them like Jeremiah, Isaiah, Moses. All these people were sent. John the Baptist. But in the new covenant, God has no favorites. He has no partiality. He's saying, I'm going to give, my whole, my, give the Holy Spirit to everybody. I'm not going to choose, you know, the priest and the prophets and somebody of different, different things. And even though St. Paul says, you know, when the building is being built, some are prophets, some are apostles, some are priests, some are teachers. He's saying that. But at the same time, this basic teaching or this basic knowledge of the word of God, the relationship with the word of God will never take place because the preacher taught you, because it is the Holy Spirit who teaches you. So even though the preacher did the teaching to you, even though the preacher shared the word with you, even though he gave you the understanding, it's not enough. Because whatever you heard from the preacher, you still need to go to the word of God. You still need to get the Holy Spirit to teach you. You need the Holy Spirit to make that word real to you. And now only the Holy Spirit will make it easy for you to understand. He'll give you the clarity. He'll give you the revelation. He'll give you the secrets. And he'll make that word so much inside of you because he's the one who's teaching you. The preacher cannot make it to do you to you. The preacher cannot sit with a stick or preacher cannot sit like a schoolmaster. It is the Holy Spirit 
with love, with patience, with, with you know, with that, with, with that desire which is there within us, will lead us on a journey and will reveal to us the secrets. You know, my sister and brothers, let me tell you about Jesus. As I said to you, the Holy Spirit is the one who makes all spiritual truths very clear to us. It is the Holy Spirit who will make it easy for us. And you know, when Jesus walked on this earth, sometimes we say, oh, Jesus was special. Jesus was, you know, the son of God. But let me even tell you this. Even Jesus was not going to explain himself to the people. Jesus was not going to explain himself to the people. In fact, many a times, in fact, most of the times when Jesus preached, he was preaching to a congregation that were dead. They were spiritually dead. They were not born again. So what did Jesus do? He would preach to them in parables. And when he preached to them in parables, those people, some of them did not understand. But those who really had a hunger for the word, they would stay back. And then Jesus would explain the spiritual truths behind the parables. So when Jesus was on this earth, he did not have that luxury. He did not have the privilege to preach to a congregation that was born again. He did not have a privilege to preach to a congregation that had received the Holy Spirit because Jesus had not died. The Holy Spirit had still not come. People could not be born again. So he was preaching to virtually dead people. Can you imagine my brothers and sisters? Jesus was preaching to spiritually dead people and nobody has ever you know, thought, about it, thought about it that way. Jesus was preaching to people who were dead people. But now listen to this. He also said in John chapter 14, verse 26. Can we put that scripture, please? John chapter 14, verse 26. He said, I'm giving you these parables. I'm teaching you the secrets. I'm giving you all this, uh, these teachings right now. But I want to tell you something, he says. There is somebody who's coming after me. And when that somebody who comes after me, when he comes, this is what he will do. Can we put that scripture? John 14, verse number 26. Listen, I want, I want you to re read the scripture very carefully. Listen to this. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So Jesus was teaching the people and he was telling them that the job of the Holy Spirit is to bring everything to their remembrance and also to teach them everything that Jesus had already told them. So the twofold job of the Holy Spirit is what? Jesus is preaching to those people. They are listening everything. Maybe they are not having notes. Maybe they are not having, you know, uh, the Holy Spirit inside of them to give them the understanding. But they are still listening. But he says, now that you came there, there is a time coming when you will accept me as your risen savior. You will accept me as the Lord. And when you receive me as your Lord, you'll be born again. And on the day of Pentecost, you'll be baptized by the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit comes, he will teach you all things. I want you to highlight this. You, he will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. So remember, my brothers and sisters, if you say today, if you say today in the new world, you know, you know, brother, I cannot remember scriptures. I don't know, brother. I'm getting old right now. I'm very old. I can't remember where I went, what, what breakfast I had in the morning. You know, my sister and brothers, if this scripture, John 14, 26 says that the Holy Spirit will bring to your remembrance and you are saying you cannot remember the scriptures, does it mean that what you are saying is the truth or is it the word that is the truth? Jesus said the Holy Spirit job is to remind you to bring everything to your remembrance. So if the Holy Spirit is not doing his job, then, the, then Jesus is talking lies. But the word of God is truth. So there's nothing wrong with the word. The Holy Spirit will still do the job of reminding you. But the problem is you are not able to remember. It's only because you are not investing time with the word. You have no interest in the word. You are just listening to the word. By the time you listen in one year, it's already gone out of your ears. And even if you heard the teaching, you did not go back to the teaching. You never opened your Bible. You never let the Holy Spirit teach you because you thought that what the preacher taught was the absolute truth and you did not let the Holy Spirit stamp it in your heart and you have not benefited from the word so far. So remember, my sister and brothers, if the word of God says to us that the job of the Holy Spirit is to teach us all things 
and to bring all things to our remembrance. This is God's word. This is the absolute truth. And therefore, the day we were born again, the day we received the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit must do this job. He is doing this job. And I can tell you for, for, a, for, a, for a fact, for, you know, the truth right now, that because I did not know the job of the Holy Spirit, I did not know the word of God. I simply read the word. But once I began to understand scriptures like John 14, 26, now I depend on the Holy Spirit to teach me. I depend on the Holy Spirit to remind me. I depend on the Holy Spirit to let me utter the words because it is he who is talking through me. It is he who is using me as a vessel and I'm not using my brains. Remember my sister and brothers, the word of God is not written to our intellectual brains. It is not written to the people who go to Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, and who have gone to seminary and all those people. He's, this word is written to our hearts. And therefore, it doesn't matter whether you have done your, you know, you have studied. It doesn't matter whether you have gone to college. All that matters is you are born again. You have the heart of Christ on the inside. You have the same spirit of Jesus Christ. You have received the spirit of God. And that spirit of God is our teacher. He's the one who's reminding us. He's the one who's leading us. He's the one who's directing us. And he's the one who's taking us on this beautiful journey so that we can now begin to, you know, be taught of the Lord and also now be used of the Lord to teach others and bring them into the kingdom of God. You know, my sister, mother, let me again say this. You know, Jesus was not going to, as I said, explain himself. He never explained himself. He never tried to justify what he was preaching. He preached in parables and he left it at that. Only those who stayed back, he, you know, he allowed them. And he, Jesus always left the job to the Holy Spirit. He never tried to, you know, force himself to somebody. He gave them the free will. He simply sowed the seed. That's what I was mentioning yesterday. He was a farmer. He was a spiritual farmer. His job was to sow the word. Our job also is the same thing, to sow the word. So in the same way, my brothers, today, we also must try to stop trying to convict people and just let the Holy Spirit do his job. You know, most of the time today, you know what happens in the church. We are trying to take a stick and trying to tell people, do this, do that, do that. You simply tell the people, go back to the word, spend time with the word of God, Allow, spend some time with the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit teach you. And when the Holy Spirit teach you, now you have heard it from the preacher. But after you heard it from the preacher, you heard it from the Holy Spirit directly. The Holy Spirit will remind you. The Holy Spirit will teach you. He'll give you a better understanding than the preacher. And now, what the Holy Spirit begins to teach you, what the Holy Spirit has, has explained to you, will simply become so real to you on the inside that you will never forget it because it has come to you directly from the creator. It's come directly to you from the manufacturer. It is the original genuine stuff. It is not secondhand stuff. Maybe you heard it from the preacher. It was the first time. But when you heard it from the Holy Spirit, it was the real thing. It was no more the preacher's talk. It was now the, the preaching and the teaching of the Holy Spirit. But my brothers, having said that, having said that, this does not mean, you know, that we don't speak plainly and try to, you know, um, I would say impart understanding to the people. Our job as preachers is simply to go there and, you know, sow the seed, share the word of God, because there are so many people today who don't know the word of God. So many people who have never heard about Christ. So many people who are not born again. So many people who don't even know that the, there was a savior who came 2000 years ago, took their place on the cross and set them free. So the intention is that people who are born again should now have a relationship and now they should be going out and sharing the gospel to people who have never heard the gospel so that they also can come under the leadership of the Holy Spirit. They also, but you know, my sister and brothers, in, in, in reality, what is happening in the body of Christ today? People come every week, every day, every Sunday they come. They come to the same. They do a lot of praise and worship. The same fish comes every week. They are being bombarded with the word. The preacher is bombarding them with the word. And then they feel so nice that they sang. They feel so good with the service. And they go outside and they are coming week after week. But they are doing no advancement to the kingdom of God. They are just not going out and sharing the gospel to anybody. Because all that they do is they have become like literally like suckers. 
they come to the word to, to the preacher they come to the church they only go to listen they only come to do the obligation and they feel that they are doing very well in the body of christ but actually speaking you know the real true believers of the lord jesus christ when they receive the word when they receive the holy spirit they don't sit on their hunches they don't sit on their thrones they don't do administration they don't deal with cash and money but they are dealing with souls they are going out and sharing the gospel that's why my brothers and sisters we must stop trying to convict people only do the job of sowing the word go and share the gospel to somebody probably you know you can start with sharing your own testimony and then let the holy spirit do his job and therefore once the holy spirit does its job you know it will only happen after we have imparted that with understanding you know our job is to become good spiritual farmers but ultimately the holy spirit is the only one who can enlighten a person's heart only the holy spirit can enlighten a person's heart when i say the heart i'm talking about the spirit you know my sister and brothers let me let me put it to you this way you know we need to let the holy spirit do his job just as jesus allowed the holy spirit to do his job you know today in the body of christ we bring people we want to convert people we want to give them some teaching we want to we want to blast them with prayers we want to blast them with religious doctrine we want to blast them with lots of prayers and lots of you know set prayers and booklets and whatever you but you know my sister and brothers if only we understood the way jesus operated jesus simply shared the truth he preached the gospel but he let the holy spirit do his job and that's the same way you and i are called to do the same because of the relationship that we have with our god you know the day we begin to have a relationship with jesus the day we begin to have a relationship with the word the day we begin to have a relationship with the holy spirit we are getting direct information we are having direct communication with the most with the high command you know my brothers and sisters we don't need to listen to somebody with their collar turned backwards we don't need to listen to people you know of, of human authority because the highest authority is the word of god if only you would understood this that the highest authority is the word of god god is speaking to the people of to his children those who are born again only through his word he doesn't speak any in any other language he only speaks to his word so god's word my brothers and sisters according to john let's go back to john 6:63 let's go back to that scripture jesus said his word is spirit and life his word is spirit and life let's go back to that scripture i want to i want to go back to john 663 there's so much to learn in john 663 my brothers and sisters that's why we really need to you know take every every revelation every every secret out of that scripture because if you understand the scripture you are going to start radically changing the way you relate to god look at what he says he says the words that i speak unto you they are spirit and they are life the words that i speak unto you they are spirit and they are life and therefore brothers and sisters if the words that jesus speaks unto us they are spirit and life it means therefore to be spiritually minded is to be word minded let me say this again if you say you are spiritually minded it means you have to be word minded because the word is spirit the word is not just a word the word is not just some loose words you know we we hear so many words that are being spoken today whether it's on television or radio your neighbor speaking we sometimes open our mouth and speak but when we understand that the words we are speaking they are spirit they are life we will be extremely disciplined will be extremely careful with our words that's why jesus even said on the day of judgment you will be judged on every useless word that you spoke we are accountable for our words so if we understand that we have been made in the image and likeness of god you know my sister and brothers we must remember that you know to be spiritually minded is to be word minded let me show you what saint paul writes to the romans in roman chapter 8 verse number 6 can we put that scripture please roman chapter 8 verse number 6 roman chapter 8 verse number 6 for to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace 
To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Now, let me just give a little bit of explanation of the scripture in Romans chapter 8, verse 6. You know, the word of God tells us to be carnally minded. What is to be carnally minded? Again, you know, this verse has been explained in an earlier, earlier series when we were talking about the difference between the Old Testament and New Testament. But just to give you an understanding, what is the meaning of to be carnally minded? Carnal is basically flesh. You know, you say carnivorous, you say uh, omnivorous, you say, you say, um, I don't know what you say for herbivorous, you say somebody is a vegetarian herbivorous. You say somebody is carnivorous, he's eating only flesh. You say omnivorous, they eat vegetarian as well as they eat meat. Like we are human beings, we are omnivorous. We eat everything. So when you talk about being carnally minded, a person who's carnally minded is flesh minded. What is the meaning of flesh? A person who's ruled by their five senses. What I see, what I hear, what I taste, what I smell, and what I feel. So remember my brothers and sisters, when a person is carnally minded, when a person is carnally minded, you know what happens? When a person is carnally minded, it happens that he's operating not according to the word of God, but he's operating according to his five senses. So when a person is carnally minded, he's no more operating in the spirit, he's no more operating according to the word of God, because everything in that person's life is dominated by their five senses. Now, let me ask each one of you a question. When you begin your day in the morning, is your mood or is your, you know, your, 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 your emotions, your feelings, are they based, based on whether you had a good night's sleep? Is it based whether it is winter or whether it is summer? Is it based on the hormones of your body? Is it based on, you know, whether you're feeling good or not? Then surely you are carnally minded. But if you are spiritually minded, you are not going to bother whether I've had a good night's sleep or whether, the, whether it's winter outside or whether it is hot outside, whether it is, I'm sweating or whether it is raining. I'm not bothered about my external factors because I'm only looking at the word of God. So a person who's spiritually minded is going to be operating in life and is going to be operating in peace. Whereas a person who's ruled by their five senses is all the time being ruled by the external factor. And so, brothers and sisters, God's word is like a window that lets us look into the spiritual world. Let me say this again. You know, when you, when you, when you operate according to your five senses, you are so limited because you don't want to see beyond your five senses. You are only being controlled by your, by your flesh, by your carnal thinking. What I see, what I hear, what I taste, what I smell, and what I feel. That's my five senses. But the moment I go beyond my five senses and I begin to go according to God's word, God's word allows, it becomes like a window. It, it's no more the screen I'm watching on the TV or on the radio, what he said, what she said. There's a window open and it allows me to see into the unseen world. It allows me to see into the spiritual world. It allows me to see into that absolutely vast world which is the parent from where I get all my strength, all my wisdom, all my prosperity, every good thing of heaven because I'm not limiting my gaze to my five senses but I'm going beyond my five senses into the spiritual world and that can only happen when I begin to focus on the word of God. You know, my sister and brothers, I'm going to stop here. There is so much to learn. I, I, I feel I'm, I'm going to go, uh, you know, a long time on this series. But I want to tell you, the moment I begin to switch from the five senses to the word of God, the Holy Spirit in me is going to open up a window and let me see into the unseen world. It's going to allow me to see into the spiritual world. And the spiritual world is the real world. It is not the physical world that is ruled by emotions and feelings. It is not ruled by, you know, one day I'm high, one day I'm low. But it is a consistent world because the word of God is the same yesterday, today and forever. The moment I keep looking at the word, I keep looking through that window into the spiritual realm. I'm going to be looking into a world which is going to give me consistency, which is going to give me that confidence, which is going to give me that intimacy, which is going to give me that relationship, which is going to give me the secrets, which is going to give me the revelations, 
And now based on that particular information that I'm getting, which is the truth, which is the unchanging truth, I will be able to be so effective in the kingdom of God, not only in my personal relationship, but also to be able to bring others, to be able to bring you know, many people into that intimacy and into the kingdom of God. So end of the day, my sister and brothers, you and I are not supposed to be selfish because we have accepted Christ. We are not supposed to limit ourselves. Oh, I'm saved. My family is saved. We go to church. We go and pray. No. If you are really accepted Christ, you have a relationship with him, you will begin to be used by the Lord in order to bring so many souls, so many people into the kingdom because you are choosing now not to limit yourself to your five senses, but you are going into the spiritual world, the unseen world, which commands every believer to go to the ends of the earth and to make disciples of all nations. So remember, only a disciple will be able to make another disciple. If you are not a disciple, you will never be able to make a disciple. And we are all called to be disciples, which means the day you become a disciple, the day you have intimacy with Christ, the day you have that, you know, that relationship with, the, with God, you're already beginning to experience eternal life because you're operating like the, like, the, like the master. And now because you're operating like the master, you also can go and bring others into the kingdom and not only bring them to make them, you know, Sunday church goers or just to go to service, but also to become disciples so that those disciples now can go and make more disciples. Imagine my sister and brothers, if all of us like disciples start going out and make, making other disciples, those disciples go and bringing more disciples, those within, within no time, we will be able to let the word of God reach to the ends of the earth. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Only disciples can make disciples. And when a disciple makes another disciple, that disciple makes another disciple. Now this disciple is made. It's like a chain reaction. But the reason why today in the body of Christ, people are just going to focus on their Sunday service, that one day service, to hear some preacher preach, to hear some, you know, retreat go, is only because they are still not spending time with the word. They are not having that intimacy with the Holy Spirit. As I told you earlier, God has no partiality, no favorites in the new covenant. Unlike in the old covenant, he has given his spirit freely to everybody. He wants everybody to become a disciple and therefore go out and make disciples of all nations. Remember, those, those disciples, those 12 disciples, then there were 120 disciples on the day of Pentecost. They went out all directions and the known world began to know Christ. Even though there was no internet, there were no aeroplanes, there were no cars, there was no modern social media. And yet those 120 men and those 12 disciples were able to go to the known world at that time and preach the gospel. But look at us today. We have got aeroplanes, we got cars, we got comfort, we got planes, we got social media, we got WhatsApp, we got internet. But most of the time, we are spending on our thrones at home, watching YouTube, watching all sorts of crazy films and movies. We are doing our own, you know, cooking from the YouTube. We are spending time on the flesh, but we have not given much time to the kingdom of God. We have not allowed, you know, this good news to reach to the ends of the earth, despite everything available to us. Let today's word, my brothers and sisters, stir us up so that now, as we grow to become disciples, we also can go out and make disciples of all nations. Amen. When we come back tomorrow, there's much more to learn on, on John chapter 6, verse 63. There's a lot that we have to learn on this scripture before we go further and start building our relationship and doing this, you know, uh, learning more about eternal life and intimacy with our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray. Praise God. Praise God. Precious brother Heavenly Maxwell, Father. go ahead. You could do that play, brother. Yes. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day today, my God. And today, my God, we thank you for your word today that has made us realize that where in which field of our life we are lacking, my God. 
Yes, my God, we have not scratched the surface of your kingdom, my God. Because every kingdom has the laws and has principles, my God. And unless we don't learn the principles of your kingdom, we cannot inheritance, inherit the wealth, the wisdom, the knowledge that what you have for us, my God. And we thank you, Father, for Brother Vincent and Sister Melanie, my God, for this time that they are imparting your precious word to us, my God. Today it made us realize that yes, Father, there is no favoritism in your kingdom. And in Psalms 119.80, is it open our eyes that we may behold wondrous things out of your law, my God. I thank you, Lord, that every day you are enriching us and opening our carnal mind, my God, and showing us the supernatural, my God. Yes, my God, this beautiful teaching and this series what brother is taking us, my God. Let us go back on it over and over again and ponder on it. And let us understand so each and every word of it and about everything, let us not rely on, on the strength of us, but let us rely on the Holy Spirit. We thank you for giving us that wisdom key today that we cannot even do, we cannot even control our next breath, live alone our life. And we tend to do life on our own, my Father. But help us to open our inner ears and our inner eyes, my God, that we may see not a tunnel vision, but see you, my God, the mighty plans you have for each one of our brothers and sisters. And we are so excited that every brother and sister of ours in this platform are precious to you, my God. And as we are all growing together, we are going to be a mighty force in your kingdom because we yes, claim Lord. these words in your name. We claim it, my God. We thank you for anointing Brother Vincent to impart the same. And we thank you for today's teaching. And we, as we end this prayer, giving you all the reverence and glory. This is not the end, but this is the beginning of a beautiful, bright, amazing future for each one of us. What you yes, have. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Jesus. Close this prayer, giving you all the reverence and glory in Jesus' precious and mighty and the most holy name. Amen and amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my brother Maxwell. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank Praise you, God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Today. Thank Praise you, God. Jesus.